Uh, today I'm doing an interview with Carol. Uh, this is Carol to my left. And Carol is what's known as a, a channel. Now, a channel is uh, something that seems to be coming more and more uh, prolific, perhaps, around the world. And it's where there's a communication, a, a channel of communication between uh, other entities, other beings, other souls, other life forms in the cosmos, in the solar system, in the galaxy, that are uh, increasingly enthusiastic to communicate with us here on the 3D plane as humans. Hi, Carol. Is that, is that, is that about right as, a, as an intro? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Owen. It's, I'm really looking forward to doing this. Yeah, me and too. We've been meaning to do it for a couple of days now. And so, so basically, I am channel for the Pleiadians, and I have been since childhood. And um, we spoke about that um, last week. And I was explaining that um, I came from a very traumatic childhood and had a lot of trauma. And that propelled me or opened a door into the spiritual where I connected to the uh, Pleiadians um, as an eight year old. And that is my first conscious memory of having connected to them as a child. And that's often the case, right? That um, it's often that uh, serious trauma in invokes maybe that's the right verb to use it invokes a a channel yeah because it releases when you have a traumatic event it releases an excess of dmt in the brain which causes psychic abilities and psychic awareness and also mediumship and spiritual experiences so it, it actually comes down to chemicals it's not woo woo stuff okay so so dmt probably needs a little bit of uh, explanation can you can you talk us through dmt um i don't actually know it that much about it other than, than what I've said. So, but it's, so it's a chemical release that's a, excreted during times of trauma? Yes, which, so an excess is um, created and, and built up and then that allows for more spiritual experiences. It's kind of a, a, a doorway or a key to unlocking kind of out there experiences. It, it opens the door to the psychic world. And, and I think I'm right in saying that every living organism here on Earth has DMT uh, components, so. right? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think I should just probably add, uh, Karen and I are on a goat farm on, on an island on, off the south coast of, of Ireland. And uh, <laughs> here's, here's Nibbles, the goat, <laughs> who's getting increasingly interested. So if you hear bells, you see goats, uh, that's, that's what's going no. on. <laughs> no. Nibbles is very friendly. No. <laughs> So, Cara, I think, you know, perhaps the next important question for people like me who, who are new to this kind of thing is uh, who and where are the Pleiades? The Pleiades um, are part of a star system called the Pleiades and the universe is teeming with life. So I always describe the Pleiadians when people haven't heard of them. I like to keep things simple and explain that they are very similar to archangels. And in our history, they've often been um, misinterpreted or represented as angels, but they're actually positive ET energy. Um, often angels come down from above with wings, which could also represent a ship or coming from above, where they've come down to help us or assist. And you know, there's a lot of talk these days about UFOs and disclosure of the UFO um, understanding and knowledge. Uh, but... I think we spoke recently that there's not necessarily a need for physical spaceships. Yeah, there isn't because they're operating on a higher dimension. Okay. So they do have ships, um, but so the way it works is, is my understanding, the, way, the best way I can explain it is they come from a higher dimension and the ships come in and as, as they come into a lower dimension, a lower frequency, which is where we're operating at, um, that is how the, that is to do with the ships. And so you, you use the word frequency. So I, I, I do some uh, harmonic sound uh, healing. So I'm, I'm very interested in, in the frequency aspect. And, and you've mentioned the phrase multidimensionality, right? So we're in the third dimension here, yeah. you know, the, the 3D building blocks, you know, the, the solid aspects of, of humanity that everybody understands. But with, with frequency and, and other dimensions, would it be a, a fair enough metaphor to talk about like radio stations that if you change radio stations you get a different band, yeah. bandwidth and yeah, frequency absolutely that's a, a i mean i often use that example as well because we are all as individual as our fingerprints and 
there are groups of us that have a similar frequency so which is very evident at the moment with the, with the world and what's going on where you have a group of people over here and a group of people at the other end and and they're not able to to hear what you're saying about things like masks or covid or uh, vaccines or because they're operating on a different frequency it's like a different language they're not D able different to, radio station right? different station they're not able to to understand or hear what you're saying because they're operating at a different frequency and so then if we're talking about multi-dimensionality being different like different radio stations uh where where are the palladians in terms of frequency are they are they much higher because there's there's nothing wrong with lower frequencies right in terms of you know good or bad right or wrong holy evil yeah strictly speaking that there's nothing wrong with with lower frequencies because they make up they're part of our learning and experience and understanding so they are propelling us to negative energies or propelling us to raise our own frequency and our own vibration okay and, and so they're, they're on a on a much higher they are on dimension? a much higher level um it, from this i would say from the seventh right up until the 13th um but they are within that bandwidth so do we have to raise our frequency or raise our vibration as a phrase you hear a lot in order to get onto the same bandwidth frequency uh, wavelength as them or, or can they reduce their frequency it's both to... okay it's kind of both they they come into ours and we enter theirs Pe so it's... people talk a lot about 5d is is that the melting pot is that the level where we meet that that's kind of the melting pot and, and 4d as well um and also 3d um and that's what that's where you would see sightings of ships and things so but it's very much to do with ascension um so self-actualizing of humanity so we, we yeah. reach our full potential ascension we do we do but with the that's something that trauma also does it it cracks us open like an egg so we it, it trauma changes our frequency it 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 turns a dial or switches a knob or moves us along that esc escalating on, on along the bandwidth of, of the different uh, frequencies along the radio stations so trauma is can be a great blessing in disguise because it can propel us into a higher frequency a higher awareness a higher understanding a higher perspective with ascension um what's happening on earth at the moment is very much to do with ascension and it's very tied in to do with um can i turn my chair around yeah i was just thinking let's let's yeah. just uh, change the angle a little bit okay because i'm in the light but you're facing away from the light okay. it'd be great to have a mirror um let's let's just do a quick change shall we so we, we were talking about trauma right yeah trauma and so it, it, almost like a trampoline so people drop down into frequency yeah. density yeah and then bounce up out of it yeah is that yeah enough to say it? but but well it is but if you're using that example not everyone will bounce up some will not be able to withstand the the lessons or the the the, the, the downloads or the frequency in order to to propel themselves back up so not everyone is um not everyone is able to propel themselves back up sometimes they get caught in that lower frequency yeah. which is where addiction would come in and um self-abuse and just a lot of th different things right there. and so you since childhood since you were eight you, you've you've been in communication with the palladians yeah that i remember okay and and just this morning you mentioned that you'd had some uh contact yeah, I woke up this morning and I was having coffee outside and had a download of information that I then went and typed up. And um, when I channel, I type very fast because um, that's, it's like taking dictation. Auto writing, type. yeah? Kind of auto writing, yeah. Writing without thinking about it, just taking dictation, really, mm -hmm. you know, just writing. And um, the I find the ascension fascinating really fascinating and it's very tied in to 
what I've been shown by the Pleiadians is very tied into Atlantis and what happened then because we things went wrong at Atlantis so we didn't get to ascend in the way that we should have or could have and the the it's there are a lot of different aspects that are tied into that one of them being the 26,000 year period okay so this is the great year mm -hmm. we're just finishing the 2200 years of Pisces and if you have times that by 12 you get to 26,000 years so you've got a galactic plane that's pretty much a flat spiral and perpendicular our solar system goes 26,000 years on a big orbit right so the 2000 years while we're inside the uh, the galactic plane it's called the photon belt or the photon band right and so this is this this is where Atlantis fell out of right yeah and that's part of it but what happened at the time of Atlantis what I've been shown is that negative ET energy came in um, into the Earth's atmosphere uh, knocked the Earth off its natural axis so causing great catastrophic events um, and the Earth has been like that ever since and then they integrated into the Atlantean society and that was the, the beginning of the downfall of Atlantis um, where we didn't get to ascend. So what, what, what is happening now on Earth is the reversal of Atlantis. So the Earth is moving, and there's a lot of different aspects, um, but the Earth is moving, shifting back onto her natural axis. Uh, <clears throat> our DNA is also raising, which that has um, that is working together with the the the, the energy of the earth and her shifting back onto her natural axis our we're going we are moving back into our original blueprint our dna originally had 13 strands and we're going back into that and if not higher so there was also a contract made up um a, a physical contract between negative um alien race um, where they had ownership given to them for the earth and humanity who so, gave it to them so i would say reptilian reptilian race i'm not exactly sure which one but one of the negative agendas negative et energies um had a contract there was a contract made up and that's now coming or has come already to an end so that's also an aspect the one of the other aspects is that we are humanity is changing as a species we are becoming new humans our energy systems are changing our blood our skin our hair our teeth our very dna is changing so we are evolving into a new human which is what the negative agenda is actually trying to stop because they not only do they want to continue ownership of the earth but also the inhabitants of earth but the contract has come to an end or is coming to an end so that's part need to do with it so everything that you see on a 3D level is all about the war between light and dark or the war between ET races for ownership of the Earth. Because what happens on Earth is not contained to Earth. It has far reaching implications. Uh, for the for the wider solar system and galaxy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because the whole universe is expanding and growing and changing and ascending it's not just earth so there is a great uh interest and um Can just come forward a fraction okay sorry there's great interest there's great interest in uh, galactically in the universe because the ascension period that we're in now is not limited to earth it affects other planets it affects other moons star systems everything that's contained in the universe is being affected by this time on earth now this is huge so so for that twelve thousand years where we've been out of the photon belt 26 well tw 12 above okay 2000 in yeah 12 under yeah 2000 in okay so, so that that belt aspect yeah you know the uh, perhaps the vedics with the with the yugas you know coming out of the kali yuga the the darkest uh age uh, the shadow age into the golden era which is that 2000 years mm. of the photon belt so it sort of it, it drops away all the crap off off us as a species yeah. right and, and that colonization you know you see it into into the species right with with humanity you know slaves and wars and all this kind of stuff that's done on a, on a planetary level mm -hmm. and, and it's replicated <laughs> replicated uh you know w with a sort of um what do you call it? Uh, an, an illness 
a disease that, that humans have inherited, uh, contracted? Yeah, through manipulation, control, being dumbed down, all... Uh, all um, and, and we're healing, there's a healing process happening. There's a healing process, but we, as uh, you know, there's a lot of star seeds, and I, I would consider you a star seed as well. But as star seeds, we kind of transcend, and that was some of the information I had this morning was about our star seeds and our mission, um, and transcendence, and how we transcend chemtrails, how we transcend pesticides, how we kind of bypass um, the toxins, the pesticides. The, the GMO crops, all of that kind of stuff, we've kind of bypassed it to a certain degree. Okay, so let's let's get into the the personalities and the characteristics that we know about these beings, entities, the Palladians. There's there's a blue aspect, right? And and, and I've looked a little bit, little bit about yeah. the, the Vedic history of India, and often they they paint their gods and the demigods. In, in blue, right? Yeah. Is that a connection with the Pallades? I would say so, yeah. That makes sense. I would say so. Um, I always get a sense of blue around them, you know, in their aura. And I also see them as, as I mean, it's... It, it's. Is it a water thing? Is, is there a water connection? Um, Cause possibly. P Pisces possibly. And, and the water signs in astrology seem very connected to the, the Pleiades. Yeah, possibly. There could be a water element there. And, and um, dolphins and whales? Yes, yes, dolphins. Um, I, I believe dolphins are, are definitely from the Pleiades. I'm not too sure about whales. So whenever I get given information from them, I'm, I'm always sure that it's accurate. But when I read stuff, I, I'm always kind of on the fence with it. You know, so it's only when I get it directly that I can be sure for myself that that, that is accurate because it's come direct from them. It's not something I've read. And, and are their message is their message always one of of, of peace, of, of staying in uh, always joy and love. Always, they, always. They, they would never have a, um, a a battle aspect to them. No, I think that I think they would. I think of, as they within their history, I think they would within their own history of ascension. I think they would have been uh, great warriors, and and sometimes they do have. They come in with a lot of passion, a lot of love. It's a higher frequency of love, but it's also a, there's also a a warrior spirit there of of wanting to make things better and wanting to raise the frequency and to not annihilate or eliminate the negative agenda, but to raise their frequency. So they very much hold their frequency. So it. It, it, it um, spreads out and affects the area and, and people around them. Because it's, it's a really interesting area for me, right? Because th there is a battle on, right? You know, I think most people would, would recognise, you know, you, you said yeah. light and dark, right? There, yeah. there's, there's this, uh, you know, ascension of humanity which requires throwing off the shackles. Let's just leave it like that, right? So then there's the idea that we've got a, you know, battle to a certain extent. But we've got to stay in a high frequency away from you know hatred and fear and uh, violence da, da 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 but but at the same time we've got to we've got to fight on our hands so that that leads to the question well how do you battle you know with without those sort of attitudes and mindsets of you know bash the opponent and and it makes me think of of the teachings of of jesus right because and maybe there's a connection with Jesus and the Pleiades. Absolutely. His big thing yeah. was love your enemies, right? Yeah. But that didn't stop him going into that temple and throwing over the money tables because of all the, you know, the, the corruption, shall we say, with regards to money and banks and lending and that kind of stuff. Yeah. He absolutely trashed the place, right? Yeah. Well, that for me is not acting in that sort of holy peace at all costs kind of thing. He, he he's pissed off and he's he's, yeah. he's throwing tables around, right? Yeah. You can be love frequency and you can be pissed off and you can have warrior energy and you can you can be a fighter. You know, you, you, love frequency is not about lying down and rolling over. Not at all. It's about it's about picking up your weapons if you need to. If you've got someone attacking you um, with an axe in the dark ages or if you're about to be drowned or or 
uh, raped or whatever. It's not about being in that love frequency and, and, and laying down and rolling over. It's about picking up your sword if you have to. Because there's so much at stake here. There's so much at stake. Not just humanity, but, but the very earth. And, and that's not even to, to mention the children. So it's about bringing that love frequency and bringing what you have to the table, whether it's your voice or it's about standing up and, and doing your mission, because we all have a mission on Earth, whether we're starseeds or not. Facing the shadow. Facing the shadow, facing our own demons, because all is one. Because I think there's a, you know, we talked about it yesterday, the, the word bypass is interesting for me, right? Because if people say to themselves, oh, I must stay in love and light, mm. then they can sort of escape, if you like, facing the shadow. They, they can, they can, you know, give themselves an excuse yeah. to, you to know. To run and hide. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's been times I've done that myself and I'm no exemption. But it's the, the and I know the, the uh, situation you're talking about, but... We all have lessons to learn along the way, and sometimes, you know, we're in, we can be in a higher frequency and then we're in a place or with people or a person that brings us down to a lower frequency. But it's about, key for me, it's about keeping my energy high and not allowing others to kind of infiltrate that. Okay. So for me, it's... Because the Palladi is about heart, right? Heart yeah, spirit. heart energy. And, and in French, heart is le cœur, right? Which le is where we get the word courage, courage, right? Okay. So, so there's a lot of bravery about... Yeah facing that shadow right yeah facing the shadow and because on an energetic on an on an i think energetic is the wrong word but on a, on a spiritual level we are all one there is no separation between me and you or me and the pleiadians or the pleiadians and reptilian energy it's all one and all aspects are to allow us to ascend all aspects so it's it, so we i feel that we should be grateful for or at least i am more understanding now of the negative agenda and how they are allowing us to ascend because it's through them exposing themselves right. that we get to see what is really going on and from a planetary perspective what you're talking about happened to you on an individual level when you were a little girl right when you were eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah, very so, much. So, so. So, so, so you were uh, exposed to that awful, dense, mm. horrific abuse, yeah, which allowed you to perhaps see it in a much more holistic way. Mm. So, is that a fair enough way to say it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I had, I've never had normal ever, and there were times when I really longed for it. But no, don't, don't come in, darling. <laughs> we got goat, so, goat saboteurs. Yeah, that's it. Go on. So, um. I would have had an extremely traumatic childhood as a child from the age of eight that I can consciously remember. And that allowed me to, that caused me to leave my body because I couldn't breathe and I was underfed and undernourished. And I had this big fat guy laying on top of me and who stunk of whiskey. Never forget that smell of whiskey. And I couldn't breathe, so I left my body and connected to the Pleiadians. And I remember kind of going out to the left slightly and connected with them and it only lasted a few seconds or maybe a few minutes but and i'd always remembered the abuse at that age but i'd forgotten the um leaving my body and connecting with them and i only remembered that years later when i began to do shamanic courses after i'd already started to channel them so my story is kind of back to front or loops it kind of loops um i remember you saying uh, a couple of days ago that you were at the, at, the, at the end, you're, you're at the end of the road in terms of uh, you know where you you plummeted yeah. in, into into you know dark depression. Perhaps is just a uh, you know not yeah. uh, understatement of the year. But then you had an an elation mm. uh, which which saved you basically, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, this is the DMT rush, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. The the I had I mean I had such a traumatic, dark, negative childhood. Um, and yet at the same hand, on the same hand, I was having beautiful out there, um, blissful experiences. And a prime example of that, the best example I have of that is I was about to commit suicide. I was about to take tablets and I was seconds away from doing it. 
and I was laying on my mattress in my room because that's all I had and I was crying my heart out I mean it was really sobbing it was snotty you know it wasn't a pretty picture and I was deciding on taking tablets and then the next thing I knew I was in the right hand corner of my room above the door looking down on my body and I was gone for about three or four hours and I met up with Jesus and took me on a whole experience to showed me my karma my situation my life my everything at that age why I was experiencing things the way I was and and that it was okay it was absolutely perfect for my perfect for my spiritual growth and when he got when he got it that I understood it on a, on a higher level then he showed me the bigger picture for humanity and I guess you could call that the dark night of the soul for me at a very young age but when I came back from that experience I was blissful totally blissful for about three or four weeks and then it gradually ebbed away and and that really I, I never told anyone about it never spoke about it until I was living on the holy island which was 2004 and then I you know began to tell a couple of friends so what, what we're looking at here uh, again stop me if you disagree but there's there's a whole sort of frequency bandwidth uh, radio station of, of psychic uh, communication, psychic uh, awareness, psychic existence, right? That that more and more people are beginning to access as this ascension process of the planet continues. Mm. Uh -huh. right? And so, people people watching this, you know, you you, uh, you put yourself out there as as a, as a psychic medium, right? Which which I'm guessing is very much connected with your your, your Pleiades uh, relationships, right? Yeah. So so there may well be people out there watching. Uh, this who were thinking do you know what I really want to get in touch with Carol because I've got you know there's things that are firing off in me you know in my torso there's there's all sorts of things that are you know resonating is the word everybody uses these days mm. and I want to get in touch with Carol well, what 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 could you do uh, if, if somebody contacted you in terms of your psychic mediumship and also your, your relationship with the Pleiades what I do these days um the way the way I work these days, and, and it's kind of been a process for me, but the way I work these days is I close my eyes and I tune into your energy and I get given information, whether it's from my guides or the Pleiadians or your guides. I work closely with Jesus and also Merlin and uh, Archangel Michael, but especially close with uh, Ashtar, Commander. Are all these Pleiad Pleiadians? No, no. Well, Jesus is okay. Pleiadian. Absolutely, in my understanding anyway, um, Jesus was Pleiadian, or is Pleiadian. So who are the others? We've got St. Michael? St. Michael. Not a Pleiadian. Oh, oh, sorry, Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael, N yeah. not a Pleiadian. I wouldn't say he was Pleiadian, okay. but I could be wrong, but I wouldn't say that. But okay. Jesus, definitely. M Merlin, as in King Merlin, Arthur? Merlin, yes, Merlin, who was a real person. But not a Pleiadian? Um, I wouldn't say he was Pleiadian. Okay. And uh, uh, Ashtar, which is part Ashtar, of yeah, a, Ashtar a galactic command, right? Yeah, okay. of, of the Pleiades. Okay. Yeah. And, and the, these are the four guys who, who you most connect with? Um, they, they are kind of the top guys that I work with. You know, there's um, Jesus, Merlin, Ashtar. I also work with Kuan Yin. Um, and that's a, a woman, right? That, that's a female, yeah, yeah. Kuan Yin. Uh, Pleiadian? Uh, no, I wouldn't say she's Pleiadian. Okay. No, I also have worked with my own guides as well. Right. Um, and some of those are Pleiadian. Um, so if someone was new to this kind of thing, mm. uh, like me, would would you be able to help them decipher, understand what it is to have guides? Yeah, I'd, I'd be able to. So what I do when I do readings, I close my eyes and I tune into your energy and I get information for you. It's not that I'm, it's not even that I'm, using my psychic ability it's more like taking the dictation it's more like just translating the the channeling channeling yeah so and then when i've done that then i open my eyes and if i have time then i do the cards um which are much more real physical practical and down to earth they're more 3d based tarot cards uh angel cards. angel cards but that's only if i have time most of the time these days i get so much information for the person that i don't it normally takes up an hour, so I normally don't have time to read the cards, which is okay, um, because the cards are more 3D based, more more. Of a, I don't like using the word lower frequency, but they're a different 
different energy. Well, like, like with singing, right, or music, there, there's a there's a lower pitch yes. and there's a higher pitch. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I I've always been kind of straight in at the deep end, you know, with the readings, and now more than ever, um, because I've got um, because I mostly um, have star seats coming to me for readings, you know. Okay. And uh, to to close our interview here, Cameron, uh, what, what's what's the news? What's what's the galactic news? What's what 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 can you tell people um, with regards to you know how how things are progressing in terms of this ascension process? We're absolutely on track. We're on point where we we are where we need to be. We've needed to we this this planet and this earth and and we have been ruled and manipulated and dumbed down for so long. It's time now for change, and this, the, the the chaos that's being experienced on Earth at the moment is needed. We, it's like a cleansing or a purging of of lower frequencies and lower entities and and lower negative ET energies that are being cleansed from the Earth. But everything is being exposed, like a collective vomit. Yes, absolutely, collective vomit. And the more it the energy, it, it, you. If you visualize a ball rolling down the hill or uh, uh, um, it collects momentum as it goes and that's what's happening collectively we are gathering yeah snowballing we're gathering momentum as we go and we are coming together like we never did before you know covid really brought a lot of us together created um, a lot of people doing interviews that would never have done them before so it's uniting us in this in a way that that we didn't before because most of us were isolating ourselves or keeping ourselves back or reclusive or not speaking about being a star seed or not speaking about psychic awareness or not speaking about frequency or not speaking about being empathic or not speaking about energy but maybe we all have this innate ability you know people say oh my god the, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up when that person came in the room or whatever you know people have these the sixth sense right it's, yeah. it's, it's innate and it's uh, residual in all of us right yeah and we come back to who we know and what we know yeah. and experiences that we know so very often we have experiences that are are connected to past life situations that perhaps weren't good or where we've or, or were good where we've known the person before whether they were our wife our brother our lover our sister our cousin you know we come back to who we know and what we know energy um attr like attracts like so we come back to who we know you know and energy flows where attention goes yeah yeah so it's all it's all headed in the right direction yeah and so if if people want to uh, book you for a reading would, would they email you Yep, my sure. email is thepleiadianchild at hotmail.com. Thepleiadianchild at hotmail.com. Yeah. Okay, it's probably a good place to end. Yeah. It's all going well. No no, no need to panic. No. Just face the shadow with bravery. Yeah, but step into love frequency. <laughs> step into love frequency. Yeah, that's always the key, always the answer. Love your enemies even when you battle them. Yeah, kill them with love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. We'll yeah. Do, we'll do another.